G'day guys and gal, brothers and sisters, but for this example, mostly brothers can be a gigantic pain in the ass. They can bully you, beat the shit out of you, and gaslight you, all the while manipulating your parents into thinking that you were the problem all along. Just ask my little brother who hasn't returned my calls in three years. Primarchs are no different. I mean, you'd think they would be considering they're supposed to be wise demigods, but no. If anything, they are worse. Pettiness, jealousy, and the constant dick measuring contests are staple aspects of the Primarch's relationships with each other. But it's not all bad. Amongst all the mess, there is brotherhood, or at least there was until half of them decided to sell their souls to the forces of hell. Today I'll go over each of the Primarch's relationship with his brothers. We will detail their relationship up until and during the earliest stages of the Horus Heresy, before everyone started becoming big ass demons that are incapable of having a relationship with anything. I'll also avoid repeating myself, hence if Dawn and Gilliman have a relationship, I won't repeat the same talking points when I get to both Primarchs. Let's get into it. Starting us off with the lion, cause you know, number one baby. The lion was a bit of an autist. While he had an aura of command and power, greater than all of his other brothers, he couldn't read or understand people very well. Sending away Luther was a stupid idea, as it just festered Luther's jealousy and resulted in the destruction of Caliban. Trusting Perturabo with super weapons was stupid, as it resulted in the traders using said super weapons. You get the idea. As such, the lion wasn't exactly the most loved by his brothers. He was respected, but not loved. Gilliman didn't like how cold and ruthless he was, even snapping the lion's sword in a fit of rage when the lion bombed Ultramar planets to try kill Conrad Curse. Lehman and the lion have an intense rivalry as a result of the biggest punch on in the galaxy. A rivalry so intense that even 10,000 years later, whenever Dark Angels and Space Wolves meet, they pick a champion each to fuck each other up. The lion viewed this rivalry in an unhealthy manner though, even impaling Lehman on his sword after the Siege of Terror in a fit of rage. The lion clearly trusted Perturabo as he gave him the super weapons, but the Lord doesn't go into their relationship much, and it goes without saying that Conrad Curse and the lion were sworn enemies. After all, they fought like four times. The lion also held some resentment against Horus as he believes he was deserving of the Warmaster title, not the big bold man. Primarch 2 has no relationship with his brothers because he literally got deleted from history and everyone's memory. I'm not talking closed program, I'm talking end task. Fulgrim, before he became a disgustingly cringe rape snake, was actually a solid bloke with a few decent brotherhoods with his Primarch siblings. You wouldn't pick it, but Ferris and Fulgrim were the closest out of all the Primarchs. This started when they performed a contest to see who could forge the greatest weapon. When they were finished, they declared the other's weapon greater, and they gifted their crafted masterpieces to each other. From there, their friendship bloomed. Ferris admired Fulgrim's nobility and effectiveness, whilst Fulgrim was in awe of Ferris's tenacity and, you know, his shiny hands. They understood each other on a very deep level, so it was a massive shame when Fulgrim picked up that dick-shaped sword and was slowly but surely corrupted by Slanesh. A part of the corruption is that he no longer enjoyed banter, seeing Ferris's jokes as insults and slights rather than the light-hearted fun that they were intended. This relationship was destroyed when Fulgrim declared his allegiance to Horus and betrayed the Emperor. Ferris was enraged and swore to kill Fulgrim. Well, oaths are overrated and sometimes swearing just isn't enough, as Fulgrim then proceeded to cut off Ferris's head. Apart from this, Fulgrim didn't like the Khan much, seeing him as a savage and getting angry when the Khan hit him with the slickest burn in all of Warhammer 40k. Fulgrim also mentored Conrad, but was not very good friends with him, as he told Rogel about Conrad's secrets, which caused a bit of a, uh, domestic dispute. Perturabo was isolated and alone, not particularly well liked due to his own attitude and self-loathing. In saying that, he had a lot of respect for Horus as well as Fulgrim for their efficiency. And if we know anything about Perturabo, efficiency gets his dick harder than a fossilized dildo. Perthi resented Dawn as he believed himself the superior builder, yet Dawn got the favor and love of the Emperor. The Khan was an outsider, a rogue, hence he didn't have many notable relationships with his brothers. When the heresy started, he and Mortarion would actually become nemesis, mostly because Morty wanted the Khan's help in stopping the traitor legions from going all batshit demon mode, and the Khan told him to get absolutely fucked. Khan would also go on to insult Fulgrim for being a bitch, and was admired by Sanguinius for his zero fucks given attitude. Lehman hated Angron due to the battle they had with each other, well prior to the Horus Heresy. When Angron was being, you know, Angron, Lehman was sent to reel him in. 
Angron refused and the two legions fought. Lehman baited Angron into a kill zone by allowing Angron to get the upper hand in their duel. Angron, once again being Angron, didn't even realize he had been totally outplayed and he was willing to keep fighting even though it was going to kill him. Lehman didn't want to kill his brother though, even though he could have, so he withdrew his forces. As mentioned before, Lehman has his rivalry with the Lion. However, despite the Lion being a bit of an asshole about the rivalry, knocking Lehman out and even stabbing him at one point, Lehman viewed it in a more healthy manner, seeing it as a bit of silly fun. Beyond that, Lehman despised Magnus and his use of the warp, almost fighting Magnus well before the Horus Heresy broke out. During the Heresy, it was Lehman who broke Magnus's spine and was ready to kill him, despite the reality being that Lehman was devastated he had to attack his own brother. He might look all gruff and tough, but Lehman's just a big softy. Rogel Dawn was universally respected, except by, you know, Perturabo. This was due to how straight and direct Dawn was. The man was incapable of lying and had a beautiful track record during the Great Crusade, not only conquering worlds, but erecting great fortresses on them to consolidate the Imperium's gains. In saying that, Dawn hated Conrad, seeing him as a madman. It didn't help that in a fit of insanity, Conrad attacked Dawn and disemboweled him, almost killing him. Speaking of the devil, Conrad was universally despised. He was seen as insane and deranged. His use of horrific war crimes was very off-putting for a lot of his brothers, and even Horus had a hard time with him. Vulcan, Dawn, and the Lion hated him especially. Vulcan because Conrad tortured the shit out of him, killing him a thousand times, Dawn because Conrad attacked him, and the Lion because they fought to near death multiple times. Conrad was very jealous of Corvus Corax. The Raven Lord also had black eyes and pale skin, also favoring stealth operations. Conrad saw them as similar, yet Corvus was superior because he wasn't fucking crazy. Sanguinius was universally loved and admired. Even Conrad had begrudging respect for him. He had a close, intense bond with Horus, trusting him completely and fighting alongside him countless times. As he was pro Psyker, he also found himself as one of Magnus' few friends, whilst even the Khan and Sanguinius were able to spark a friendship. It wasn't that he was so perfect that people hated him, it was that he was so perfect that it was impossible to do so. I mean perfect other than the fact that his sons turn into space vampire berserkers sometimes, but you know, details, details. Sanguinius was seen as a natural replacement emperor if the Imperium was to fail. As mentioned, Ferris had his legendary bond with Fulgrim, the greatest bond out of all the Primarchs. Aside from that, Ferris was universally respected. When Horus turned traitor, he was genuinely upset that Ferris didn't join his cause, as he believed that if he did, it would have been the easiest victory ever. Ferris also crafted numerous powerful weapons for his brothers, including a gun for Vulcan and Lorgar's mace. He respected Vulcan's legendary craftsman abilities, but the two weren't very close. Ferris was also a bit of a cold and hardcore guy, not the easiest to get to know and get close with. Plus, he died pretty early on in the heresy, so, you know, not as much room to explore his relationship as others. Primarch 11 had just as many friends as Primarch 2, so absolutely fucking none. Loser. Angron was hated by nearly all his brothers. He was seen as a savage berserker, hell-bent on destruction and taking lives rather than the Emperor's vision for a united galaxy. Even when he joined Horus, he still saw the War Master as a fake-ass bitch. He literally tried to fight nearly every single Loyalist Primarch at one point or another. The only brother he began to form a bond with was Lorgar. The two Primarchs tore through Ultramar together, forming a respectful bond. Lorgar tried to show Angron a better way of thinking, which Angron dismissed. However, Angron did save Lorgar from getting crushed by a Titan, so there's that. Gilliman wasn't the most emotionally in touch Primarch, yet he did have a short list of Primarchs which he named his Dawnless Few. Primarchs who he saw as incredibly reliable and that he could win absolutely any war with, no matter the odds. These Primarchs were Rogel, Sanguinius, Lehman, and Ferris. They weren't necessarily the best Primarchs, but they were the ones that Gilliman saw as the most reliable and synergized the best with his legion. When Lorgar, that fuckhead pedo, taunted Gilliman by telling him that Vulcan, Corvus, and Ferris had all been killed on Istvan, Gilliman mourned all of his brothers. However, he said that he would miss Ferris the most. Gilliman was one of the Primarchs who greatly admired the Khan, but he did not really trust him. Mortarian was a bit of a salty bitch, super hypocritical and kind of a dumbass. He also smelled like absolute shit, hence never made many friends. By opposing the use of psychers, he pushed away brothers he admired, such as the Khan. When the true nature of the traitor legions was exposed, Morty was like, fuck. He hated psychers and he fought against their use and the warp itself, but now he found himself surrounded by demons, sorcerers, and all the kinds of shit he said he didn't like. He had two options. 
turn his back on the traders or become a massive hypocrite. He chose to become a hypocrite and as literally every wise man has said about a hundred times, nobody likes a hypocrite. Magnus was quite a polarizing figure. His brothers either loved him or hated him. anti psycho Primarchs such as Lehman and Morty wanted to slap his ass so hard that it wouldn't even be read anymore. Whilst scholarly Primarchs such as Lorga and Perturabo got along with Magnus like a house on fire. Magnus respected Horus and even tried to save him from chaos, but pretty much everything Magnus does fails miserably, so there you go. Horus was universally admired. His charisma was second to none and was considered to be his Primarch power. He was the only one capable of forming a bond with Alpharius, whilst many Primarchs, such as Lorgar and Fulgrim, looked up to him and were as close as brothers could be. It's Horus's intense connection with nearly every Primarch that allowed him to be able to get so many of them to sell their souls to the forces of hell. Horus was mad during the Horus Heresy that all the shit Primarchs joined him, whilst all the good Primarchs he admired stayed loyalist. Lorga wasn't a very popular Primarch. His preachy Jehovah Witness bullshit was very off-putting. In saying that, he was good friends with Magnus and he looked out for Angron, until he, you know, turned Angron into a demon and ruined his life. He intensely hated Gilliman for raising his favourite city after the Emperor wanted to teach Lorgar a lesson. Eventually, he grew to regret his hatred of Gilliman as he realised that Gilliman didn't want to destroy the city, but did so to follow his father's orders. By then, it was far too late for reconciliation though, like, way too late. Lorgar is also scared of Corvus, having been brutally beaten by him twice now. Vulcan was well liked by his brothers. The Emperor even said that Vulcan's greatest power was his humanity and kindness, as long as he weren't an Eldar child standing in front of a flamethrower. Vulcan did have the suppressed rage of a dragon though, beating the shit out of Conrad Curse before telling him he always took it easy on him during sparring because he was so pathetic. Ufta. Despite his loving nature, Vulcan doesn't seem to have a particularly close bond with any of his brothers, preferring to spend more time with his sons. Corvus Corax was a bit of a loner goth emo kid. As such, his friendship circle was very small. He admired Gilliman's tactical genius and he resented Horus for using his legion as an extension of the Lunar Wolves. When the heresy kicked off, he raged at Lorgar, killing most of his Gal Vorbach and disemboweling him. Conrad would save Lorgar, but Corvus and Lorgar would meet again. Both in their demon forms, and to absolutely nobody's surprise, Corvus would fuck up Lorgar's shit once again. It's theorised that the reason why Lorgar has been out of the setting for so long is that he's been hiding from demon Corvus. And finally, Alpharius. Alpharius has Alpharius as a friend, whilst he despises Alpharius the most. That's okay though, because he has Alpharius to back him up. So take that Alpharius, you cuck. In seriousness, Alpharius and Horus were mates, whilst Alpharius and Gilliman disliked each other. Mostly because Gilliman thought the Alpha Legion were a bunch of pansy ass bitches. Primarch relationships are always a joy to read about. Rivalries, brotherhoods, and bloodshed is always a huge vibe. If I've missed any Primarch relationship or opinion, then throw them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then the Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month to give you access to a boatload of, uh, cheeky hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more relationship advice. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.